Do you ever wish you were a little bit taller? Ah, but you've been cursed with short jeans. There's nothing you can really do about that. Well, what if you could find someone with the trait you were looking for, say, tallness, and they could just give a copy of their tall gene to you? After injecting their tall gene into your body, you grow six inches. Then you share a copy with your friend, who also grows six inches. Later on, you have a son, and he inherits the tall gene from you too. Crazy, right? Well, what if the gene donor didn't even need to be human? Sounds like Spider-Man, or maybe X-Men? Or even weirder, what actual bacteria can actually do in real, actual life. Really. It's called horizontal gene transfer, and bacteria have been doing it for billions of years. Bacteria are pretty basic life forms. Actually, the most basic. Wrap some DNA and some ribosomes with a membrane, and you've got yourself a bacteria. Making more bacteria is straightforward. Simply copy your DNA and split it into two. It's called binary fission. Binary fission is vertical gene transfer, parent sharing genes with offspring. Horizontal gene transfer is one organism sharing genetic information with another already existing organism. And yes, both organisms don't even have to be the same species. There are a few ways this can happen. Bacterium dies and leaves behind some of its DNA. Some bacteria have an ability called competence to actually absorb this DNA into their own DNA in a process called transformation because they are literally transforming into a different organism genetically. If the new DNA codes for some new capability, the bacterium gains the new capability. But why go through all this trouble when you can have a virus do the work for you? Viruses reproduce by injecting their DNA into cells, which then proceed to make more viruses. Sometimes other pieces of DNA are even captured along with the virus DNA, and then hand-delivered to the next cell, where the viral DNA and or the captured DNA can be integrated into the cell's DNA. This process is called transduction, for as an air duct leads air, a virus is leading the DNA to be transferred. The third way involves a structure called, I kid you not, a sex pilus. It turns out certain parts of a bacterium's DNA can break off and form these separate DNA structures called plasmids. Plasmids usually form rings and can replicate independently, allowing for easy transfer between organisms. They also sometimes provide instructions for bacteria to create long, hollow, hair-like structures that emerge from the cell's outer membrane. These Pili can attach to another bacterium and draw it in closer, establishing a cytoplasmic bridge between them. A copy of the plasmid travels through the pilus and pops into the other cell, which now has the capability to build its own sex pilus. This process has been wonderfully named bacterial conjugation. Okay, so different species of bacteria can horizontally share genes with each other, which is amazing, but this is surely just a bacteria-only thing, right? Turns out bacteria can transfer genes horizontally to fungi, plants, and yes, even animals. As much as 8% of the human genome was acquired through horizontal gene transfer. Syncytin, a protein that helps create the placenta in humans, is viral DNA integrated into the primate genome approximately 63 million years ago. The lovable bear-like extremophiles known as tardigrades of Kingdom Animalia owe approximately one-sixth of their genes to horizontal gene transfer. There's even an example of what looks like a transfer from animal to animal. Two groups of fish, herring and smelts, that can't interbreed share an icy water survival gene that all other related fish species don't have. A mystery that seems to have horizontal gene transfer as the only explanation. The tree of life is becoming tangled with the webs of these discoveries. Something to ponder as you drift to sleep at night, horizontally.